Are we ready? Madeline is here. She is very grumpy. So we are going to see how this goes. I don't think it's going to go well. Which is why I haven't done any updates. Because this is all she does. Um, yeah, so I haven't been doing any updates because, because literally all day, every day is her screaming, grumpy, she doesn't, she's fussy, she doesn't want to do anything, she, like right now she doesn't want to sit here, she just doesn't want to do anything at all, like nothing makes her happy and she's not sick, she doesn't have any weird problems, she's teething a little bit, but she is just unbearably grumpy. Okay, well anyway, this is weeks 19 through 23, so okay, then we'll get back down. There you go. Okay, week 19, baby is the size of a mango. Week 20, baby is the size of a banana. Week 21, baby is the size of an endive. Week 22, baby is the size of a coconut and where we're currently at. Week 23 is the size of a grapefruit. So, it is, says, baby's face is fully formed and now he or she just needs a little extra fat to fill it out. So, my body is swollen ankles, Braxton Hicks contractions, aching back, bleeding, or swollen gums. So that is all from the Bump app. In those weeks, I have had doctor's appointments. The baby is doing well. The baby is apparently small. Here goes the tripod again. Um, the baby, they said, was small-ish, but it kind of matches the, um, what are you doing? It matches the sizes on the Bump app, so I don't really know if the doctors are confused or if the Bump app is confused or what's going on, but here, take this. So, anyway, everything was pretty good. There wasn't anything wrong with the baby, really, um, but I do have a low-lying placenta, so that is, the placenta is really, really close to my cervix, which means that if it doesn't move, a lot of times when your uterus expands, the placenta will move upwards, and if that doesn't happen, I will have to have an emergency C-section, which, I mean, people have been asking me about if I'm worried about having that, or she's now playing with her diaper pail. That is just sanitary. Anyway, people ask me if I'm nervous about having to have a c-section and honestly, I don't really care. I'm probably like the only person in the world that says that. Um, my labor and delivery and birth and everything with Madeline was six hours, no epidural, no pain medications, and induced. So I was having induced contractions lasting 45 seconds, 15 seconds in between there every minute apart. Um, Every 40, they lasted 45 seconds, I had a 15 second break, and then I had another contraction. That is what it was like for six hours, and I was not allowed to have any pain medications because of my scoliosis that I have, and we did a whole thing with the um, anesthesiologist and everything. Um, I, it's on my record, I cannot have an epidural, I don't get any of the pain, like IV medications, nothing like that. Um, so, I'm scheduled to be induced again, so I know that I will have to go through that same miserable thing <laughs> that I went through last time. Um, and, you know, that's fine if that's what I have to do to get this baby out, then that's what I have to do to get this baby out. On the other hand, if I have to have a C-section, since I cannot get an epidural, I will be put to sleep, so that process will be relatively painless until recovery. Um, so, it's just kind of whatever. Um, my recovery with Madeline was fairly easy, but I had two second degree tears and those, those are so bad that they hurt for a long, like months afterwards, even after the um, stitches were out and everything, they hurt for a long time. What are you doing now? You want to play with your toy? Well, let me go get her toy. All right, so anyway, the low-lying placenta may need a c-section, probably won't need a c-section. Either way, my both of my options are not fantastic. So for somebody who has gone through labor and gets an epidural and everything is wonderful and fantastic and you get all numbed up and everything, good. That would have been my, 
my option. If I had that, I don't get that option. So both of my options are on like opposite ends of the spectrum. No pain medication, lots of pain, horrible contractions, all that, and being put to sleep. So I just, the baby's gotta come out, the baby's gotta come out, and that's how it is. So that is kind of what happened at my last doctor's appointment and my last ultrasound. The heart rate was 152, I think is what it was. Um, I do have some ultrasound pictures, so I will try to put those in here. And uh, we did not find out the gender. So it is going to be another surprise baby, like you were. <laughs> so she was a surprise baby. We didn't find out with her. We kind of knew by the end that she was a girl. We just kind of had this feeling and things had happened and ultrasound technicians had accidentally said things and um, tried to correct themselves. I don't know. So anyway, we kind of just had this feeling that she was a girl and we're kind of starting to get that feeling with this one, but at the same time, everybody still thinks it's a boy. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Boy, girl, what do you think I'm having? <laughs> I don't know. So as far as my symptoms go, they have been quite interesting. Um, they're actually kind of matching up with last time. So um, my hips are really starting to hurt again. Um, but a lot of times it's not just my hips. It's like my knees. Ooh, you're making a lot of noise. It's my knees and my lower back that are hurting. And what's really weird is that um, from my scoliosis, my right hip is kind of out of alignment and there's not anything that can really be done with it. It's just kind of permanently out of alignment. And so it hurts all the time and it pops. If you know me in person, you've heard my hip make like these horrendous sounds. Like you don't, I won't even do it on video for you guys because it is, your body should not make <laughs> those sounds that my, like the, uh, just, it's bad. So anyway, but with this pregnancy, my left hip is the one that's causing a lot of problems. And that one is usually fine. It usually doesn't do any popping, cracking, hurting, anything. And that is just constantly sore all the time. Then my knees are kind of hurting. So I'm kind of just having like joint pain really in general. And my lower back hurts. And I see a chiropractor for my scoliosis and everything, but it's just something that happened last time and it can't really be fixed per se until I have the baby because it's hormones that are kind of relaxing the muscles and it's not really holding the joints in place. As horrible as that sounds, that is basically what happens during pregnancy. So it causes lots of fun. What do you have now? Can I have that? Okay, thank you. A little sticker or something. Oh, Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. What a child, what a child. <laughs> this baby did not start moving. I'm pretty sure I told you guys in the last video that I had not felt the baby move yet and the doctors were starting to get concerned because nothing was happening. And that could be because of where the placenta is, but I think it's kind of more in the back. And when the placenta is in like the front of your uterus, a lot of times you won't feel movement right away. But uh, I don't think mine's there. It was kind of like low and in the back, so. It wasn't affecting that, but I now, okay, you're gonna fall. She's standing on a curtain that I don't have hung up and she's trying to like climb her dresser and you're getting stuff off the dresser. Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Um, I did start feeling the baby move around 19, 20 weeks and it wasn't just like little flutters. It was like big kicks that you could see and feel from the outside. So we went from zero to everything and like overnight so that is that's reassuring and now the baby doesn't start moving and she's playing with the tripod and here we go Wee! okay taking you guys for a ride other symptoms other than now baby moving hip pain joint pain all that stuff um i am peeing when i sneeze again <laughs> that is always the best symptom don't you do that no 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 <laughs> Oh, child, can you say hi? Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Can you say hi? Now she's using the tripod as a walker. Madeline, you are crazy. I like, I have to hold the tripod in place right now because of this. This has been a really, really hectic video, but I know I'm gonna look back at this someday. Hi, future self. And uh, 
it's all worth it and I'll get a good laugh out of this and remember how crazy my child was and how crazy I am for having them 14 months apart. <laughs> right, Maddie? You're gonna be 14 months apart, so. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, which I hope you even made it this far because this has been insane. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I'm down here in Madeline's playroom now and I actually forgot to show you guys my belly bump, so here you go. It's not that big. You know, it's, I don't know how well you can tell, but there you go. 23 weeks, not too super big. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.